G'day. Today's video is gonna be a little bit of a clarification video. Some time ago, I made a few videos on how to set up and use the population scanner for Hunter Call of the Wild. And since that time, I've received a lot of comments and questions in those videos. So I thought I'll take the opportunity just to try and respond and answer as many of those comments and questions to help people get a better understanding on how to use the application. Let's get started. G'day, welcome to the channel and welcome to today's video. My name's Matt, but you will know me as WFX Malice. As I said, today's video is gonna be a clarification video, just answering and responding to some of the comments and questions I received regarding the population scanner for Hunter Call of the Wild. So we'll get straight into it. The first and most common one is, the file won't open, all I get is a large text document. You've downloaded an archive file, a zip file. You need something to unzip that file, so WinZip, 7-Zip, WinRAR, there is heaps of free extraction applications you can get on the internet. Download one of these, open the file, and drop those files onto your desktop or wherever you want to store them. The second most common one I got was, does it show you where the animals are on the map? No. No, that would take the fun out of the game. You need to go and find the animals. Now, the latest version of this application does have a map which is a little bit deceiving. What this is showing you is the most common need zones that you'll find these animals at and the different color coding is relating to what time of the day. You can see a time scale at the top, relate that to the time that you see those dots, go to those areas, and there's a good chance you're gonna find the animals. Is it gonna show you that that's where the diamond is? No, sorry. You have to play the game and find the diamonds. Does the application show great ones? No, I don't believe this is built into it. You can see that the scale doesn't go up to show fabled. It only shows up to, I believe, level nine legendaries. I don't know if there's a way to track the great ones. Uh, it's just something you're just gonna have to find. They're supposed to be an Easter egg surprise. So I think if it showed you where the great ones were, that would definitely take the fun out of the game. Can you populate your map with diamonds by killing high level males? Yes and no. We studied the statistics over a period of time using the population scanner. Now we found that when you killed an animal, it didn't automatically respawn that species close to that trophy rating. It lagged behind by about four or five kills. It's all to do with the way that the random number generator works. So you had to kill, say, three or four different species of animals or three or four of the same species of animals before you saw the first one repopulate in the map. Statistically shown, animals respawned as a slightly higher trophy rating than the one that you killed. Not always, but statistically. So by going and killing all the gold males on your map, yes, in theory, you should start pushing those up to diamonds. However, I believe that there is a cap on diamonds in the random number generator. So you couldn't just fill your map with diamonds by going and killing every low level animal and working them all up to diamonds. Also on that note, we found that when you killed a diamond, it typically respawned as a extremely low level trophy rating. So that's sort of keeping the pool flowing. The population scanner says my map has a diamond. Does that mean it's spawned in or it's in the pool waiting to spawn? No, that means it's spawned in, you just need to find it. It will be at one of the need zones somewhere. If you didn't kill any animals, if you just walked around and spotted every single animal on the map, you would eventually find that diamond. Here's a tricky one. I reset my population and it doesn't work. It just reverts back to my previous map. So you need to make sure that you have cloud save turned off in the game and you need to be in offline mode on Steam or Epic. I'm not sure how you do it on Epic. I don't have the game on Epic, so I can't help you there. But in Steam, you need to make sure you go into offline mode for that to work. Oh, this is a beauty. Does it work on console? No, no, it's a Windows application. You need to get the game on PC. Sorry for console users. You'll need to try and find someone that come up, can come up with some sort of patch that'll work for you guys. Does it work with Epic games? Well, as I said before, yes, it does. Um, you just need to locate where your save game files are. I'm not sure where Epic Games stored them. Maybe someone can help us out in the comments there. I can only refer to Steam and that's in your My Documents, Avalanche Studios, and then you'll find your save game folder there. In most cases, unless you've installed the game and pointed it somewhere else. Is there a difference in animal count from a fresh map to one where you already have lots of need zones? No, you just need to find the need zones. The random number generator in the game has pre-populated to say how many of each species and of each trophy rating and of each gender have spawned into the map. And that's also allocated them to different need zones. 
You need to go around the map and you need to find those need zones. If you've got a map where you've got lots of need zones, go to your favorite need zones at the favorite times and look for those animals. Hopefully you'll find the diamond. How do I interpret the rare fur type info? So if you click on a particular species on, a, on any map, it'll show you at the top the rare fur info. Now it shows it in a percentage and that's in count over the entire of that species. It'll usually be a fairly low number and that's literally all it'll tell you. It won't tell you what gender they are or what trophy rating they are. It could say that you've got albinos. They could all be low level silvers. Who knows? Some of my map files are empty. You haven't played that map yet. Basically, every time you load into a new map, it generates the population. If you haven't loaded into that map to play it before, it hasn't created a population. Therefore, the scanner will just detect an empty map. This was another classic one. I reset all of my maps and didn't get many diamonds. It's a random number generator built into the game. It doesn't give you lots of diamonds in a row. So I found the best practice for this is to reset one map, load into it, play it for a little bit, shoot a few animals, exit the game, log off, go offline, reset the next map. If you reset all your maps in one go, you'll probably find you'll have one map that has a really high diamond count and all the rest will be really low. The only one I haven't really seen a high diamond count for is Medved. Don't know why. This is my favorite by far, not just in my videos, but in everyone's videos. It didn't work. Doesn't work for me. Not working. Great. Shall I just wave my magic wand and all your imaginary problems you haven't explained are automatically fixed. Seriously, if you're going into a tutorial and it didn't work for you, give some info on what didn't work, what step failed, the problem you're having, so at least the person doing the tutorial can try and help you and others overcome that problem. Saying it just didn't work and leaving a thumbs down doesn't work for anyone. I have a saying in life, you can't help someone who's not willing to help themselves. And if people aren't willing to leave a decent comment, they're not willing to help themselves, in which case I'm not gonna help you. And lastly, does resetting the population reset my need zones? No, not at all. All your need zones should stay exactly where they were. All your tents, all your stands, all your tripods, everything will remain exactly as it was in the map. All that will change is the population count. Now that means, yes, it will reset what animals are at which need zone. So if you had a favorite need zone that was highly populated, you might find after resetting the population, that need zone won't have as many animals. They might be at a different need zone. So be aware of that. I hope I've covered off everyone's comments and questions there. That was majority of them covered right there. I tried to summarize a lot of them. If this has helped you, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit subscribe. If it wasn't helpful, leave some comments down below. Don't just give it a thumbs down and leave. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.